So good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Kate Payne, and I am the founder and CEO of Standing Out Online. And I help people, um, I help executives and entrepreneurs and people like you, uh, professionals, to use the LinkedIn platform uh, to set yourself apart so that people can find you online. So you need to like optimize your profile to make you discoverable. And also to, um, to really use it as almost like a mini website about who you are um, in addition to your regular website so that people can really learn about who you are as, as a human, you know, your authentic side and uh, what you do and who you help so that when people are making a decision on whom to work with for, for, as for a realtor or for, for mortgage advice, um, then they can find that there, which they can't necessarily find on your website because the about section on your website can be pretty basic or very bio-like. So we're gonna dig in today and, um, and look at some more. So before I start though, I'm just gonna set a few little, um, just a little housekeeping. So as I'm going, I'm gonna be sharing my screen in a moment and um, showing you slides. I've got a lot of screenshots to show you examples of things on LinkedIn so that it all clicks and makes sense. Um, if you have questions, you can put them in the chat. I will not be monitoring the chat because I don't wanna be distracted and I wanna focus on giving you a good presentation. But Rachel will be keeping track of what's in the chat. And um, if it's something that needs to be asked in the middle of what I'm talking about, I'm totally fine with that. Um, otherwise, I'm going to allow a little time at the end and you can do sort of like an ask me anything. I can go live into LinkedIn if you'd like and show you things if you have questions about that. So, um, so, so that's really, really it. And I'm going to turn, I'm just going to close the chat box right now. And yes, Tom, I've, I've read your work. Ha ha. <laughs> so thank you for being here today. And um, Rachel, we are recording, right? Just want to make sure we're recording. I can't. Yes. Okay, great. All right. So I'm going to switch to share screen. And I'm going to ask if everybody can see my screen. And Rachel, if you can just um, let me know that people can see my screen just so I know that it's working. Yes. That would be great. Great. Okay. All right. So we're going to be talking about personal brand and we're going to be talking about LinkedIn today. Um, LinkedIn is really a platform where your personal brand can live. And if you're not really sure what the whole definition of personal brand means, I'm going to explain that to you so that you have a better understanding of what I mean by personal brand or personal branding. So, um, and I also, before I get started, I just want to thank Matt, uh, Matt Reef and Ryan um, for inviting me to do this with you today. And at the very end, there'll be a slide that has my, um, my LinkedIn link so that you can connect with me. I would love it if you would all connect with me on LinkedIn. And I am always happy to answer questions um, uh, you know, at any time if you have questions about LinkedIn, even if it's like two weeks from now. So don't hesitate to ask questions. So first of all, I'm gonna talk about why LinkedIn is so important for your business. Um, and frankly, it's no longer your online resume. It truly is, it's where your digital footprint can live online. When LinkedIn started in 2003, um, it was really, set up to be a job seeking platform. And then it has evolved tremendously uh, since then to be what it is today, which is not only a job seeking platform, but it's also become a professional online networking platform. And it's also a marketing platform. It's not necessarily, you know, billed as that. But when Microsoft bought LinkedIn about three years ago for $26 billion, um, Microsoft has done a lot of things in case you've noticed in the last couple of years to make LinkedIn just that much more user-friendly, um, more aesthetically pleasing, and certainly with their algorithm trying to get, uh, have it be a place for you to build online connections and, and do business. So it's, it's B2B, but it's also B2C. So it's business to business and business to consumer. So uh, right now, LinkedIn boasts about 675 million members. Um, we're not too far. I, th I think it's approaching about 700 right now. And I did a double check last night. Um, so we're not too far off from a billion, but it is the only place where professionals come online. There's no other, there's no other platform like LinkedIn out there. You know, you all may be using Facebook for what you do, which is perfectly fine, but LinkedIn, I'm going to show you what, why LinkedIn is different. It's a place for you to really, you know, um, position yourself as a thought leader and an expert in, in your industry. So if it's real estate and mortgage, 
lending or mortgage advice. Um, you know, you can really stand out there if you commit to engaging on the platform and really um, investing in your profile because it all starts with your profile. It's also, um, I mean, professionals are joining at a rate of more than two new members per second. So it's, it's got a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, it's very robust. It's a very rich place to be. I love this quote, networking isn't how many people you know, it's how many people know you. So again, this is the whole thing about positioning yourself so that you can set yourself apart. It's also a great place to generate leads. Um, I call them, you know, warm leads. And, you know, granted, I do LinkedIn, you know, for a living, but really my background is in marketing, journalism, and public relations. And so I've been helping people for years figure out how they could um, make themselves stand out, especially if they were a solo entrepreneur or an independent professional um, or an executive who's really trying to make a place for themselves online with the type of expertise that they have in their industry. And um, another term you might hear every now and then is thought leadership. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm curious if you have all heard that. I'm not sure if there's a raise your hand option, Rachel. Um, but for those of you who aren't sure what thought leadership might mean, it's kind of the new marketing buzzword for um, subject matter expert or SME. And this is a place where when you interact on LinkedIn and you put content out, whether it's articles or it's posting just in the newsfeed um, and commenting on other people's uh, professional you know, content or comments, you are building your thought leadership because if people are paying attention, then they're going to be you know, seeing you as an expert in your industry. And that's part of what you wanna build here. That's part of what I want you to have on your radar is that you want to be seen as a go-to because the more you commit, the more you put out there over a period of time, and it is a slow dance, as I call it, um, you, when, when somebody's having a conversation, you want them to think, oh, you should call Matt Reith or you know, something like that. Because I see them do all the time on LinkedIn doing this and that. And uh, that's a way to build your thought leadership. And LinkedIn is a really good place to do that. And it's also a place to really nurture the, the uh, in-person relationships that you already have. So it's a way to nurture the relationships you have, but it's also a place to find new connections and build even online relationships too. Whoops, sorry. I, I don't know what happened. Jumped ahead. Kate, so, we have a question. Yeah, okay. Uh, a uh, attendee wants to know what your thoughts are on cold in mail and is it a good idea? Um, that's a great question. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna save that more toward the end because I am gonna talk about connection requests. And so I will address your question then. And Rachel, if you could just make a note when I get to that point to just remind me, I'm sure I won't forget, but just in case, I will address the question then. Thank okay, you. yep. So there are like hundreds of stats about LinkedIn demographics, but um, just these are a few that I thought might be of interest to you for what you're all doing in real estate and the mortgage world. Um, so 40%, of those 675 million members use LinkedIn daily. And that has gone up significantly in two, two years. That used to be at around like 18%. And Microsoft has done so much to the platform to make it better and a few things that aren't so good. But um, for the most part, it's all better. 41% uh, of millionaires use LinkedIn and 44% of the demographic users earn 75,000 a year. And 65% are now using LinkedIn primarily on mobile, which is significant because you know what? We're using these all the time. And if, you've, um, if you are a user of LinkedIn or even a, 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 even a regular user, not necessarily a power user, you've probably noticed that the LinkedIn app has become also much more robust. There's more you can do on it. You can even edit some aspects of your profile on your phone, which you couldn't do until like a few months ago. So um, just a, a few more pieces of information for you to have about LinkedIn. The other thing that's really, really interesting um, on LinkedIn, and that this doesn't happen on any other platform like Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, it does to an extent, but people engage with purpose on LinkedIn, all right? People go there to get business recommendations. They go there to find expert advice. They go there to read the headlines. Um, it was probably within the last year or so that LinkedIn started having like a news service. If you've noticed when you're in your home feed, over to the right are the headlines of the day. And so a lot of people go there to get their news as well. 
And, um, but people, when they go to LinkedIn, they're looking for long articles. They're looking for long form content. They're not looking for that flash in the pan stuff that you get on some of the other channels. So there's a lot of opportunity on LinkedIn for you to get, to get out there and um, you know, put your best foot forward on what you know about. And I'll get into some examples of that. So where do you start, you ask? It begins with your profile, as I said a few minutes ago. So here's a screenshot of my, my profile. And what you can see, one of the things I've done is I have um, created a banner image and I would encourage all of you to do that. You can use a tool like Canva. Um, and Rachel, if you wanna put the link in the chat, it's canva.com. It's Canvas, except without the S. So canva.com. There's another one called um, Pick, P-I-C, Pick Monkey. That's another app you can use to create, to create the banner. And just so you all know, for those of you who are interested or if you have a graphic designer friend who could make you a banner, um, some of the templates in some of these uh, tools don't have the right dimensions for the LinkedIn banner. So I'm gonna give you those dimensions and Rachel, maybe you could just put this simply in the chat. So 1,584 pixels, PX, by 396 pixels is the size for your LinkedIn banner on your personal profile page. And what you can do is you can upload an image and then you can add your logo. You can add in some text. You know, you could put in your tagline. You could put in a phone number if you wanted to. You could put in an email. Uh, Matt Reith just did his and he put all of the above. Now, mind you, none of this is clickable, but um, if, if for those of you who use LinkedIn, you know that there's three levels of connections. There's first level, so that's direct, like, like Matt and I are direct level connections. Second level connections means that either any of my first level connections or any of Matt's first level connections would be second level connections to you. And then there's third level connections, which is sort of like everybody else. Now, when someone comes to your profile, if they are beyond a second level connection, they cannot see your um, contact information, okay? So if you put an email or a website or a phone number or something up here, um, you're making it user friendly for the person that's visiting your profile to be able to find you offline if they wanna reach out to you, you know, for business. So um, the profile is very important. I also want you to realize that- okay. pro Yes. Hey, sorry, Ron. This is Matt. Uh, just wanted. Uh, this is what I did for just just to save yourself. If you're not as computer savvy uh, with like graphic design, and I'm certainly not. What I did, I went to Fiverr.com. It's oh, F okay, yep. I V E R R. That's Fiverr. F I V E R R. And I paid someone five dollars to give me five different banners for my LinkedIn profile. Yep, that's so, that's what Fiverr is great for. Yeah. Um, so that's great. great. That's great if you don't have the tech savvy, but the other tools are um, pretty much drag and drop. So it shouldn't be too hard. Or if you have a teenager in your home, they can probably figure it out for you too. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that, Matt. Um, so your profile is critical. It's a place where you can, you know, it's your profile can be a sales tool. It's a place for you to be a brand ambassador for your company or business. Um, it needs to be interesting and keep people's attention. So it needs to be compelling. And it also needs to be optimized. And when I talk about optimized, I mean, you need to pay attention to keywords. And so I'm gonna get into keywords a little bit. I'm not gonna go really in depth with it, but um, I'll give you a quick example of what I mean by keywords if you're not sure. Think about when you go to Google or Alexa or Google Echo or whatever it's called, um, and you ask for something, you are using words that Google uses to search the internet to find the answer that you're looking for. So when you type in words like to find a product that you might wanna buy on Amazon, you're typing in keywords and you're usually using a string of two, three, four, five words. So what I want you to do is think about the keywords that somebody might type into Google or LinkedIn search to find someone like you. So if they're looking for a realtor in the Connecticut area, if they're looking for a mortgage advisor in the Connecticut area, you know, be thinking about geography and location like Matt just put on, Matt, did you put on Connecticut Mortgage Advisor or more? I can't remember. I did. Name. I put CT Loan Officer. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So think about geography, but also think about industry. And don't use super generic terms because if you use a generic term like realtor, you know, that's going to yield millions of results if people are just going to look for realtor. So 
I'm going to show you some examples as we get there, but this is why these four things is what makes your profile so critical for you. And as I said at the beginning, your personal brand and your personal story, which I'm going to define here in a minute, lives on LinkedIn. It lives on your website first, for sure, because the only thing you own on the internet is your website. Um, but you can also, you know, really want to pay attention to how you position yourself on LinkedIn. As I'm sure some of you know, if you go into Google and you're going to be having like a virtual cup of coffee with somebody, or you're going to meet up with somebody maybe who might want to buy a house, you know, you may go in and do a little Google search and you type in their name. What's what, tip, what typically shows up first on Google are people's LinkedIn profiles. And if you show up there, it's because your profile is optimized. Um, and it's also because of your name. But a lot of people don't know your name. So that's why the keywords are important so that you make yourself discoverable by using keywords that make sense for you. So let me first define what a personal brand is. Um, I'm, I'm showing you the answers here, but I'm curious to know if a couple of you wanna just put in the chat, when you hear the term personal brand, what comes to mind? What, what do you think a personal brand means? There's no wrong answer, by the way. And then Rachel, if, uh, if you can share a, one or two of those with me, that would be great. Does anybody pop it in? Did anybody pop in, Rachel? I can't tell. Sorry. It's, okay. So somebody says a company's look and feel in messaging and their differentiator. Yes, that's true. But you said company, um, which is true. So, so when you talk about branding, branding is usually associated with the company. So it's the look, the feel, the logo, you know, all of that, their reputation. But your personal brand is you. Okay, so your personal brand is essentially your reputation. And what is your reputation made up of? Your integrity, your values, your, your subject matter expertise. And those are the kinds of things you wanna think about for your personal brand. And when you know your personal brand and you understand your, your unique value proposition, okay, which is a part of your personal brand, then that helps you to interact on the platform, which helps you grow your network and by building that personal brand and, and like if there's something unique about you, you want to be known for that, then people will be seeking you out for, for your expertise or referring you, which is, which is also important. You know, one of the things Matt has in his um, email is the highest compliment I can get is your referral. So, you know, even if you're not getting your own business on LinkedIn, you could be getting referral business. And so that, that's really essential as well. So what I say is know your personal brand, but then an aspect of your personal brand on the LinkedIn platform is if you can tell a nugget, like a slice of life of your personal story. And again, I've got examples for that too. So we're gonna talk about um, telling your story in the about section. So um, the about section is that big block of text that comes after the intro card. And um, it used to be called the summary and now it's called the about section. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend some time showing you some real life examples of that. So typically when I speak to people in, uh, in front of people in person, I always show this slide, but without the caption. And I always say, if you saw this image with the book and the dollar sign, what do you think the caption would be? But since I can't see you all raise your hand and everything, this, this image, I kind of want this image to like, you know, kind of imprint on your brain that your story is your greatest asset because it's your differentiator. And it's the thing that makes you relatable to other people. I mean, I think you all know that when you're in the midst of business, when you first start out with talking to somebody, you're building connection, you're starting to build a relationship. You're not just like, you're, hopefully you're not calling people up or meeting them going, I'm gonna sell you something, I'm gonna sell you something. I mean, you do not wanna start out with um, trying to make a transaction um, before you build a relationship. And your story, especially on LinkedIn, is what will help you to be more relatable and more human to the people who might be looking you up and researching you. So your story is your greatest asset. And it also helps reinforce or strengthen um, your personal brand. And so you might be sitting there going, okay, I hear this term story or storytelling and personal story, and I'm not really sure what it means. And I have no idea what my story is. Um, and first of all, I will tell you, everyone has a story. Um, uh, I, I was working with Matt the other day on something and I said, you know, Matt, part of your story, which is part of your background 
is that you were a former Navy SEAL. And you know, you don't need to go into all the like military side of that, but people know, mili- know Navy SEALs sort of through being, you know, good leaders, teamwork, uh, leadership qualities, you know, getting the mission done kind of thing. Those qualities are part of your story, but they're also part of what you do in your, in your current world as a mortgage advisor. So, you know, everyone has a story and I'm going to show you some ideas to get your creative juices flowing. Um, it makes you authentic. So it shows your human side. It certainly makes your profile more interesting. I can't tell you how many people, and I, I've been doing this for six years, when I go to people's profiles, um, and I'm saying this with all due respect because people just don't know better, but most people have what I call the blah, blah profile. It's like, I do this or I do that. It's very bio-like. Some people use like third person. Um, that's no longer a best practice. First person, conversational is what you want to go for. And some people just ignore it all together and there's nothing. And I want you to know that the about section is the most read section of one's profile. So um, it really behooves you to, to, to work offline and figure out what you want your about, about section to say. And, and a little piece of your story can fit into that. It also builds what's called the no like and trust factor or the KL, KLT factor as it's known. Um, that's, that was defined by a well-known marketer named Bob Berg, B-U-R-G, um, who's written a lot of books on, on sales and things like that. And this is the quote, all things being equal, people want to do business with and refer business to people they know, like, and trust. That's gold. And this is, this is what you want to be doing. This should be your foundation for how you're setting yourself up. And let me just add that we're, I know we're talking about the LinkedIn platform here, but some of this exercise that I'm sharing with you is something that's going to be like foundational inside you. Like this is going to be the foundation from where you know who you are and how you want to um, connect with people and how you want to work with people and ultimately have a business transaction and do business. Um, so you want to be, you want to get to know people, you want people to like you and you want people to trust you. So make sure you keep that in mind, whether you're on, on LinkedIn or in real life or on your website or whatever, it's, it's very foundational. So, um, when I do my longer presentations, I have a myriad of, um, ideas to get you to think about how to identify a nugget. And I'm talking like a little paragraph, a few sentences of your personal story to use in your about section. Um, so these are the, the, these are the most common, a memorable experience earlier in life, why you chose your career path. Like, why do you do what you do now? Why did you want to become a realtor? Why did you want to become, go into the mortgage world? Um, personal transformation or self-discovery, or a time you faced a challenge and used your expertise to solve it. So these are kind of, um, you know, the four things, you know, I'm not saying that you would use all four of these. You'd pick one, all right? Cause you're just picking like a nugget of your story, not several stories, you know, that you want to be putting out there. These are just to kind of get you thinking about what, what your story might be. So I'm going to show you a few examples here. These are real world examples. And I did try to find some people in your industry. Um, but this is a gentleman I worked with in Vermont. Now I want to just be clear. Uh, David is really well known globally because he is um, really well versed in wind energy, wind power. So he's in the renewable energy world and he now owns a company that um, sells solar trackers. So just so you know, his position, okay, his personal brand is he's an expert in wind and solar. So we put solar and wind energy visionary in his headline right here. Um, but, but he's not necessarily trying to sell his solar tracker, but he gets quoted, he, journalists seek him out a lot for comments. He's also on the board of the uh, um, Post Carbon Institute, which is a global organization. So when we were working together, um, I wanted to come up with David's nugget that I wanted to be first. Okay, so in the about section, I always want the story to be first because you want to hook your reader in. So as you can see with David's, he starts out with, I've been an energy guy my entire life. I built my first wind turbine at the age of 14 with bicycle parts and a light bulb to generate electricity for my maple sugar house. When it worked, I was hooked. And then he relates it to growing up in Vermont near this mountaintop site of the world's first utility scale wind turbine. And then he segues into, you know, how that fits into his profession. So I'm only just showing you a little section of his about. So this is just to get you, uh, to give you a, a good picture, um, a snapshot of, of what I mean by a nugget of your story. Um, here's a, a, a realtor I worked with in Indiana, uh, Lisa. And um, Lisa had been an attorney 
for 30 years and then stopped. She didn't want to do it anymore. And she wanted to become um, a real estate broker. And so what was interesting though, is that in the rest of her profile that you can't see, she talks about, even though she's um, got a, a background as a lawyer, she can't use any of those lawyer skills in her real estate because that's just a conflict of interest. She can't do that. But it also is what makes her even more knowledgeable. So it gives her that more of a credential. So she, she talks about, um, she really likes to work with first time home buyers. That's her niche. And that's the type of buyer persona that she is going after. So she, she kind of talks here about um, going, she, she makes her story or the beginning compelling and interesting related to her field. And then she says, are you new to the process of buying or selling a home or are you experienced weighing your options? So she's kind of speaking to the type of person she, she would work with. So if somebody's researching her, they'd be like, oh, she's speaking to me. I'm a first time home buyer. Or I've also bought many homes, but she obviously knows what she's doing. So she's not just kind of doing the, the blah, blah stuff. Um, this woman is actually in the, in the mortgage world. She's a long time. She's now a mentor and coach for, for women mortgage loan officers, Karen Dice. Um, she's in South Dakota. And um, when, when she started with her story, she said, when I began in the mortgage business, I never imagined I'd be a pioneer and an advocate for women in the mortgage business. Um, in my small town, I was the first woman closing agent, the first woman loan officer, the first woman branch manager, and ultimately the first woman owned mortgage company with all female staff. She's been doing this for almost 30 years or 40 actually. So she kind of pulled from her background and then um, shared a story about you know, her sister being diagnosed with cancer and so she had to give up the business. And then she goes into who she works with and how she helps them. But again, I'm trying to illustrate story for you here. This is another realtor I worked with uh, in Florida, Jessica Peterson. And so she had an interesting story about um, she, she really was funny. She's like, what did Barbie in the ICU teach me that men and women love? As a kid, all my Barbie dolls were women with schedules, their careers mapped out, finances in place and volunteering scheduled. Then the day came, my husband was in the ICU. People kept asking me how I did it all. You could say my whole life was about planning and structuring with numbers, life and time are precious. And then she kind of goes into this question thing, like, who are you? Um, and then her profession and who she serves. And then she goes into more detail. So this is what I mean by kind of like starting out with a hook and really making your profile interesting. Um, this is a local realtor up here in Vermont, Tish. And you can see she's done a nice banner image with her logo and, um, and information. And then these uh, like Vermont realtor. So this would be if somebody was searching for Vermont realtor, Tish is making it more likely for her profile to show up in a Google search or a LinkedIn search. And um, she also put Vermont new construction expert because she has a lot of expertise in that. She owned a restaurant for years that everybody used to go to. And so she relates her restaurant experience to what she's doing now as a realtor. So um, are, you all, are you all getting an idea of what I mean by story? And, um, and, and just, this is something you need to do, you know, offline with a good old, you know, pad of paper or, or type using a Word document and create your about section with what I call my three-part recipe. And I'm going to get into that in a second. So <clears throat> I'm going to get into the um, about section with the three-part recipe here in item number three, but we're going to go over five strategic profile tips. And if you are in, um, in front of your computer, uh, you can actually do number one in real time if you want to, but it might mess up you being on Zoom. So I'm not sure. Um, Rachel, I'm going to ask you a question if you can answer me. Is there when I, I will email you my slide deck. And if uh, you want, do you, can you send that out to the people that registered for the webinar? Yes. Okay. I'll send that to you afterward and then um, people can get a copy of my deck. Um, I would just ask that you please um, keep it to yourselves and not share it with the whole world. <laughs> we'll also be posting the recording of this webinar. Oh, great. Okay. So we're going to go over uh, these five, these five things here to help you really, um, you know, really make your, uh, your, make your game, raise your game using LinkedIn. So the custom URL is very important. When you first sign up for a LinkedIn um, account, you get this, what I call the gobbledygook URL. So the URL is the web address, right? So if you were on your page, on your profile page, and you looked up in the, in the toolbar in your, in your browser and saw what the URL is, it's gonna be like linkedin.com slash in, slash 
gobbledygook numbers with your name and hyphens and numbers and stuff. And what I would like you to do, especially if you have a, um, an uncommon name, um, is to create a custom URL. So it's nice and clean and it's just, it's just your name or a version of your name. So if you, are, um, if you all do this, when you do this, or if you're doing it now, um, it's the easiest to do this on your, on your laptop or your computer is when you're on your profile page, you go up here to edit public profile and URL. You click on that. And then this window will open and it will show you when you get there, it'll show you what your existing web address is for your profile, your existing URL. And what you wanna change is this, is this back part right here. Whoops, sorry. So click on that pencil icon. And then this will show up. This is a zoomed in version of what will show up. And what you want to do is just highlight this, this section from the gobbledygook stuff and type in your name. So let's say it was Matt Reith. So Matt would type in Matt Reith and he would click save. If your name is taken, LinkedIn will pop up and say, sorry, already taken. So you could do, he could have done like first name, middle initial, last name. Um, you could do first initial, middle initial, last name, especially if you have a common name. Or you can add, you know, maybe the last two digits of the year of your, of your birth if you wanted to. Um, so, and then click and click save. And then now you've got this nice, clean web address. So like my web address is what you see right here. So I use this on my business cards. I use it on my sig email signature, both personal and professional. And it just looks much neater and cleaner. Um, and LinkedIn, from an algorithm standpoint, actually ranks your profile higher because you've taken the time to create a custom URL. And LinkedIn doesn't really teach you about doing this. They just kind of think that people are going to sort of figure this out through osmosis, I get, I guess. So um, try that, try creating a, a custom URL. Um, Rachel, I'm going to ask a question to everybody. How many people actually have a custom URL? I'm just curious. A few people? Okay. Meredith said she just made hers and Ryan has one. Oh, great. Super. So this is usually a tip that people don't realize, but um, don't be afraid to add this to, to, you know, you should be using this link in various other things like the email signature, your business card, um, even on your, you know, if you have like a little bio on the real estate website or the mortgage website, you know, if, if your company allows it, um, you know, add it in. And in fact, if your company doesn't allow it, you might want to let your uh, leadership team know at the company that you work with that they should be, you know, really utilizing their LinkedIn profiles more. Um, it can really be a nice, helpful tool in people deciding if they want to work with you because everybody does research now before they make a buying decision. So this is back to David's um, for the optimized headline. So this is where the keywords come in. So if you're looking at David's um, headline here, and just so you all know, you have Traditionally, you have up to 150 characters for your headline, and that includes letters and spaces. Um, LinkedIn just increased it to about 210, 220. And when you do it in the template, if you go over, it'll give you the ca character count by the, what you've gone over, and you'll have to figure out a shorter way to say what you want to say. But um, just, you know, every one of these terms. So what I've done is I've like, we used intrepid entrepreneur and then we use this right here. This is called the pipe symbol. And whether you're on a Mac or a PC, that, that vertical bar or the pipe symbol is just above the return key on your keyboard, okay? And so this, this right here, you could use this or a bullet. You might see some people on LinkedIn use emojis. I'm not for emojis on LinkedIn. I mean, they have their place, but not on LinkedIn in my opinion. Um, is a known separator to LinkedIn's algorithm. So if somebody were to go into Google or LinkedIn search and type in, for example, renewable energy industry, David's profile is more likely to show up in search. I'm not going to say it's guaranteed. So this is why keywords matter. Um, and then trained engineer, you know, these are just ways of he's describe, describing himself. So make sure that whatever you have between these pipe symbols is at least a couple um, industry search terms that people can, that will help make you discoverable if people do a search online. Um, this is another uh, past client of mine who is a financial advisor, and I wanted to show you something just kind of fun here. So one of the things I always teach people is that when you do your keywords, so John used financial advisor, retirement strategist, you know, he's the managing partner, 
And at the end, I, I suggest to people, use a quirk, something quirky, something, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be hokey or funny. So John put in closet meteorologist. And when he sent it back to me, I mean, I laughed out loud. I was completely like, what does that mean? And so we ended up meeting in person and he showed me his phone. He pulled out his phone. He goes, well, actually when I was little, I wanted to be a weatherman. I always thought I was going to be a weatherman. And he goes, and to this day, he goes, I'm still fascinated with like, I'm, a, I'm like an armchair weatherman. And he goes, and I've got every backyard weather gadget you could imagine. And he pulls up his phone and he shows me all the photos of all the stuff, rain gauges and wind little windmilly things on his um, porch. And he's, he, he and I worked together about three, four years ago. And he said this one thing that he's put on here has been a conversation starter for people to reach out to him. Like it's, it's just because it's so clever and it was so interesting and it was part of John's personality. You know, he's in sales, even though it's financial advising. And so this has kind of made sense. So it doesn't have to be funny. It could be, you know, marathon runner or triathlete or um, barefoot water skier or something like that. You know, again, give it a little bit of interest, put a little bit of your flair and your personality in here. If you feel comfortable doing that, you don't have to, it's just a little technique. Um, here's Matt's. So Matt just put this up, I think in the last couple of days and um, created this banner image back here, put in the phone and email and website. So this is something I would definitely encourage all of you to do. But here is what I was referring to before is that um, I suggested to Matt, he put Connecticut loan officer because people could be doing a search for that. Mortgage advisor is what he does. It's a more generic term and he may show up, but you know, mortgage advisor is probably going to get yield a lot of, um, uh, of search results, but it's still descriptive. So I don't want you to necessarily always worry about what the algorithm is. Um, I have like an 80, 20 rule, 80% you still want to write for the human, for people and 20% I say for the robots. Okay. Cause you still want to make it so that you can, you know, um, be found. Um, real estate investor, and then sort of Matt's little quirky would be former Navy SEAL. And I'll bet you anything that's a conversation starter. Is it, Matt? You want to weigh in for a second? It, it tends to be. Yeah. I mean, just how, do, how, how is it? Give me an example of somebody who might have reached out to you um, like cold. Uh, one is to just one in, basically interested in military in general, um, but uh, I get a lot of recruiters also reaching out, just trying to switch industries or, or just oh, okay. kind of get that type of personality into a bigger company. Right. Okay. Thank you. So those are a couple of examples. Now we're going to talk more about the summary, the about section that I was talking about. So this is um, the way, this is the beginning of, of my profile. I've actually changed it since then, but this was what I originally did is I said, I help authors, speakers, coaches, and entrepreneurs stand out online to become recognized authorities in their industry. And so my whole goal here is that when you first come onto anybody's profile, you only see the first two or three lines of their profile. And what you want to do is to pique their interest to get them to want to learn more and literally click on the see more link so that it opens up the whole, the whole thing. So that's why using a nugget of your story at the beginning is, is, um, is really smart. It really behooves you to do that because most people will be like, I've worked in the mortgage industry for 15 years and blah, blah, you know, and then I go back to the blah, blah profile. So um, the compelling piece of this is very important. So here's my three-part recipe that I wanted to um, get across to you to make it interesting and really robust. So the three parts are who you are, which is your story. What's the problem you solve? So like people who are looking for a realtor or a mortgage advice. Okay. So that's their pain point. And then, and then a way to, for you to talk about how you solve that problem, like use one of your skill sets to describe how you solve that problem. So this is a, a portion of an about section for um, another financial advisor I worked for. So he didn't want to use a personal story per se, but he wanted to use his personal philosophy about financial advising. So he, he talks about here that he had worked for the, the, big, the big firms, you know, like the Morgan Stanleys and the Merrill Lynch's of the world. I'm just throwing those out there. I'm not saying he worked for those ones. And that he felt like their products were um, inflexible. So he decided to go out on his own and be more of an independent financial advisor. So he shares that piece here. But his first line is, I'm not your typical financial advisor, which is just, you know, kind of, you know, might jolt somebody enough to pay attention. Then he segues into what's the problem you solve. So he, whoops, sorry. He chose to do it. 
through using bullet points. So our clients are learning to learn, looking to learn and create financial planning strategies um, in midlife and want to stay up on constantly changing tax laws. So he's kind of defining who he works with. So again, if somebody's interested in working with this guy, um, they can see themselves and go, oh, this is, that's me. He would work with somebody like me. And then you segue again into like, how do you solve the problem? So he says like, do you want more control over your money? Do you want to lower your costs and achieve maximum financial potential? So this is just another example of that three-part recipes. And there's many different ways you can do it. And now I want to, um, I'm gonna show you some, I, I think I showed you some in those profiles with how people use story. And I was trying to keep it consistent with your industry, the people that are, that are, that are watching online. <clears throat> so um, we're going to move on to connection invitations now. And then if you want to get into more about story um, toward the end here, we can certainly do that. I just want to get through all of these things that I wanted to teach you for your profile. So for connection invitations, and Rachel, this might be where that question comes in. Um, first of all, I want to explain, these are the do's and don'ts. So first of all, when you do send a connection invitation to somebody, please, please, please be sure to send a personal note. And I'm going to show you some screenshots of what that looks like. Don't just send the generic, please join my LinkedIn network. So what LinkedIn does is they set you up to basically like, if you guys have um, a premium account, it'll be uh, people you may know. And then they'll list all of the profile photos of them. And it'll be a big blue button that says connect. And if you click connect, it sends the generic invitation and it doesn't give you the option to add a note. Um, I would really urge you to not do it that way so unless it's somebody like, you know, your aunt or your brother and you don't need to send the personal invitation, then you can do it that way. What you would do is in that where you see their photo, click on their name or their profile shot, which will take you to their personal profile page. And then from there, you can click connect and then it will open up the window for you to add the personal note. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, the other thing you can do is when you receive an invitation to connect is after you accept um, once you accept a, a little notification will pop up from LinkedIn saying, would you like to send a, a note? And I would, you know, this is the way you build relationships is by starting conversation. So this is the way you can do it online through LinkedIn is reply with a little note after accepting. Thank you so much for accepting. Um, you know, if I can ever answer a question for you about, you know, fill in the blank, you know, please reach out and you might start a conversation that way. Um, I do it almost all the time. And in fact, I would love it if any of you watching today would connect with me on LinkedIn and, um, and I will reply with a note after accepting. Um, so don't send the generic invite and don't also accept all invitations. So um, this is where I'm gonna answer the in-mail question. So in-mail, if you have a premium account um, on in-mail, I think you get 10 or 15 in-mails. I don't use it at all. And if you use them up, then you have to pay like $10 to use an in-mail, okay? So basically in-mail, the reason it was designed is that if you can't connect with people in traditional methods, then you could send them an email. So like, let's say you wanted to connect with the CEO of a company who probably doesn't wanna have lots of connection invitations coming their way. You could technically, theoretically send them an in-mail, which would go into their inbox and you could be like, hey, I wanted to connect with you, send your note of whatever you wanna talk about. And if they reply, great. but most people find in-mails um, annoying because a lot of times people use them um, inappropriately. They use them for sales and they use them like before they even have a connection, they just start selling right out of the gate. Some regular invitations are doing that. That's a real problem on LinkedIn right now. And LinkedIn, the company is trying to figure out how to reduce some of that. Some people are using automated tools to connect and that totally goes against LinkedIn's terms of service. Um, it might be a bulk way to connect with people and get your connection numbers up there, but LinkedIn is really um, ramping, uh, really uh, stomping down on that. And um, if you do get caught using an automated tool, they'll, they'll suspend your account, whether it's free or premium. So um, that's my little spiel on in mail. And I'm not sure who asked the question. Did I answer the question for you? And I'll give you a moment to reply or Rachel, you can let me know. All right, and while we're waiting for Brian's reply, we have another question and okay. Brian has asked, if someone looks at your LinkedIn pro account, will you be notified? Um, well, that, that's not a simple answer. 
you will not be notified, like you're not gonna get like a notification, um, you know, on your phone or on your LinkedIn account. What you will do is if you went into who's viewed your profile, if you have premium, a premium account, not a free account, you can see who's looked at your profile. Um, so it's not a notification per se, but you can see who's looked at your profile. Now that being said, and we can do this at the very end, if Rachel, if you'll remind me, I will show you how, like, let's say you wanted to, let's say you have a really good friend or a peer who's another realtor and you maybe wanted to just go look at their profile, not because you're doing anything shady, but you kind of want to see how they, how they represent themselves just because you're doing some market research, but you don't want them to know that you looked at the profile. You can go into your privacy and settings and you can look at people's profiles in anonymous mode. And that's not shady. It's not weird. Um, and then you can go back to being visible and I will show you how to do that. So Rachel, if you don't mind just um, flagging that for me at the end during q and I'll go through that. Okay. Sure. Great. Thank you. All right. So here's where um, you can customize the invitation. So again, you go to the person's profile page, you click the blue connect button, and then this box will open and you can type in here um, and it gives you an example. Say, hey, we have 10 mutual connections. Um, I heard, you, I read your blog. I heard you speak. I attended your webinar. Um, just something. It doesn't have to be lengthy. Just a sentence, giving it some context to ask them to, to connect to, your, to you. But just don't be salesy and then click send invitation. Okay, engaging on LinkedIn. This is where I get a lot of questions about this. Like, okay, I know I need to get my profile up, up to snuff, but when I'm on LinkedIn, you know, I comment on people's posts, but otherwise I don't really know what to put out there. Um, so if you're a realtor, you know, do you wanna be necessarily putting out listings you have? I would say not specifically. What you wanna be doing is putting information out there that represents who you are as the type of realtor you are. So you remember that example of Lisa Miller from Indiana where she talked about who she primarily deals with, first time home buyers um, and even people who are, who are seasoned, but she really, really, um, her target is her first time home buyers. So figure out who your buyer persona is, who's your target client, and then put content out that shows what you know about working with first time home buyers, for example, okay? Um, Lisa actually created a workbook on her own and she has first time home buyers like fill out this workbook, which helps her figure out, you know, what their budget is, what they're looking for. Do they need to be in a place with good schools? Do they not have kids and they don't care? Do they want, you know, all of these things. And so she's created a tool that she uses that's, that's specific to her. So when you're engaging on LinkedIn, these are some ideas. So how to posts, okay. Those are, any, how to do anything is really, uh, people seek that out and people do searches for it, like how to buy a house. <laughs> you could actually create a post about that. You could create an article slash blog about that. If you already blog on your website, um, you can repurpose those as an, as a, um, an article on LinkedIn's publishing platform. Um, I'm not getting into that today. That's a whole separate workshop. But you can also do list posts, like you could share others or create your own, top five, top 10, things like that. Um, you can share videos. You can share other people's videos. You can do your own interviews. Like if you wanted to interview a client on your phone and um, let's say you do a little three or four minute video, you can upload that as a video. Um, make sure that you put your phone on a tripod or something, make sure you're well lit, make sure people can hear you, that there's no cars running behind you. Um, so make sure the video is at least of decent quality. But this is, these are all ways for you to put content out to really exhibit um, to, to, or to showcase who you are, what you do. Um, and just, just so you know, you cannot upload a video to LinkedIn that is longer than 10 minutes. The sweet spot's around two or three minutes. Um, and then long form content, like I already mentioned, blogs, articles, things like that. Video tips you could do like if you use um, Zoom, for yourself, you could do a video where you record just yourself talking into the camera and create a video and then download it as a, as a video file. And you can upload that with a video tip on how to buy a house or something like that, or mortgage, mortgage tips, things like that. So I just wanted to show you where to do this because some people just are not familiar with, with the toolbar and LinkedIn. So I'm just going to give you a quick little picture here. So this is your toolbar up here. This is where you can search for people's names. You can search for keywords. You can search for hashtags. 
This is the home, which is where the feed is. Like if you use Facebook or something like that, every platform has a feed where you can see what people have put out. Um, your network is, if there's a little number up here, that means I have two invitations from people to connect with me. I can click there and go in and accept or not. Um, I don't pay attention to jobs because I'm not job seeking. Um, this is where people can message you like um, internal email within LinkedIn. And then these are notifications of people that you're connected to first and second level connections. And you might, and then LinkedIn is suggesting um, for you to take a look at things. So that's your toolbar. This is um, where you go to get to your profile where it says me. Um, but this is where you start a post. So you do it from the home and you start the post here. And when you click on that, then um, the, the, another box will open where you can type in, type in your post and you can add a photo or a video or a document. You can add in um, a PDF. If you have like an infographic of how to buy a house or something like that, and you, it's used you know, in, in your agency or company, by all means share that. That stuff is really, really hot on LinkedIn and it gets people's attention. So that's just a quick, quick example of things that you can post. So I'm also gonna show you, um, we're, gonna, we're sort of wrapping up here and then we'll do some Q&A. I wanted to show you two features on LinkedIn. Uh, one is the new featured section. Everybody should have it by now. And I also want you to know about using hashtags and I will describe what hashtags are because a lot of people aren't even sure what they are. You hear about them all the time. You see them in all the corporate branding and people aren't really sure what they are. So I'm gonna go, th go through that briefly. So this is a screenshot from my profile page. So here's my about section. And then just below it is this new featured section. This came, this, this started rolling out from LinkedIn over the last few months. They rolled it out randomly all over the world. Everybody should have it by now. If you don't have it, that's because there's nothing that you've put in there to show it, okay? So there would be on your personal profile page when you're in, in edit mode, which you are when you're in your personal profile page, is um, there'd be like a featured thing and it could say that you can add something that you wanna be featured. So you can have multiple, multiple things featured. And then what would happen if, if a viewer was looking at it from their end, there'd be like a little arrow right here and people could scroll almost like a slide carousel and they could see other pieces of media that you have, have featured. Some people have like 40 and 50 and I strongly advise you not to do that. I, I stop at six. So six is just my number because it's enough for people to see different types of things. Now, for those of you who are realtors, this is the place where you could put like a featured listing if you had something new, okay? I wouldn't make all of these things listings that you have, but you know, putting one in there or a link to like your, the agency or something like that, or if you're in the mortgage world, you, know, you could be putting things up here that are rele relevant to, to your expertise in the mortgage advice, advising world. So what you can do here is there's a plus icon, which means you can add, and I'll show you that in a minute. And then if you click on the pencil, whatever you have in the featured section, you can edit and you can reorder. So I have here, this is an article that I did on LinkedIn about what do I say on LinkedIn um, during a pandemic. It's related to the whole pandemic and COVID. This right here is a YouTube video link of about me and my, my business. It's about um, two minutes or less. And then this is like a clip from me being on a podcast. I was a guest on someone's podcast. So I put the link in there. So if you click on this plus sign, then this, these options show up. So posts are the things that go in the newsfeed that I just showed you. You could show content posted to LinkedIn and just click the link and you would, it would automatically show you what your posts, your past posts are, and you could select one if you wanted to. Um, you could show any articles that you've published on LinkedIn. You could show links to web content. So this could be like a listing. This could be any kind of link on the web. Or you could upload photos, documents, and presentations and create a caption down here. So this is a game changer on LinkedIn. And it's something that you want to keep fresh. Um, there's a few things like my about thing I want to keep there so that people can learn about me if it's the first time they've come to me. But I go in here probably every couple weeks and I change up what's there so that it's fresh. But it's a way to feature something and it's directly click clickable. People can click on it and it'll take them right to that link. So um, this, this is not, LinkedIn has never given this option to have this on a profile before. 
And so this is something that you can really be utilizing, but make sure you stay on top of it. And then hashtags, I just wanted to, to sort of give you um, a feel of what hashtag is. So a hashtag, I had this uh, a colleague of mine um, describe what a hashtag is. It's the best definition I've ever heard. When you're sitting around a campfire, everybody's gathered around a campfire and they're talking about like one topic, right? So think of a hashtag as that campfire. It's a way to be talking about a single topic where everybody's sort of gathered around it, okay? So hashtags are super hot on LinkedIn. They came about in about the last year, year and a half, but a lot of people just don't know how to use them properly. So I'm just going to give you a few uh, um, tips on it. So first of all, here's what hashtags can do for you on LinkedIn. First of all, it maximizes the exposure of any of the posts that you put in the feed. You only want to use three hashtags, all right? So they're going to be around a topic. So you could do, you could do real estate, realtor. I mean, there's, 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 mul there's so many hashtags out there. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you how you can find them when we go live. So you want to use, and I've got this straight from LinkedIn product development, three hashtags in the post, no more, no less. It's like on Instagram, if you had to use Instagram, you use 20 or 30 hashtags. Facebook, like the, the rule of thumb is like 10 to 12. On LinkedIn, it's three, all right? And LinkedIn, it's the algorithm. If you use three hashtags, they will rank your copy more. And it's just that simple. You can research hashtags in that LinkedIn search field in your toolbar. And then please know that hashtags only work in posts. They do not work in an article and they do not work in a comment. So you might see people putting hashtags there, but they're not getting picked up by the algorithm, at least, at least as far as I, I know right now. So just here's a few, these are all three separate screenshots. So if you're on your personal profile page, as you start to follow hashtags, all right, so you can go up here to the search field. You could type in hashtag realtor. Um, there's probably a million people following that hashtag. So if you put your post up and you put three hashtags and one of those hashtags is hashtag realtor, it's going to show up in that hashtag realtor feed. So right here, like LinkedIn is one I use all the time. Um, this says 256,000 people are following that hashtag. That means I've got targeted eyes on the content that I've selected the hashtag for. As you follow hashtags, they will show up over here in your sidebar when you're in your profile. And you can kind of, you know, just, you can just go and follow them. You can read what's in the feed. You don't necessarily have to use them in your post. Um, but, but I used the hashtag LinkedIn in this post and um, a lot of people followed my infographic. And then in my notifications, a couple days later, I got this in my hashtag that says, congrats, your post has been trending on hashtag LinkedIn. And that's what you wanna get because that means like the algorithm's picking it up and that means targeted eyes are on your content and that's what you want. So that's a very basic, uh, a very basic hashtag law, but a, a rule, but, um, but that should help you. And the whole point of everything I've talked about today is to help you be more visible, all right? So visibility simply creates opportunity. And, um, and that's what I want you to create. I want you to create visibility for yourself in a way that works. If you're gonna ask me like, how often should I post? Once a week. If you feel like you can commit to once a week, start with that. As your engagement builds over time, then you might decide, oh, well, I'm getting engagement. This is kind of working. I wanna do more, it's kind of fun. And then you might wanna do more. But it's not like Instagram and Twitter where you're supposed to be like doing something all the time. On LinkedIn, you, you know, less is more, which is, which, is a, which is a good thing. So just remember that visibility creates opportunity. And then if any of you would like to connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, this, is, this is my URL. Feel free to connect with me. Feel free to send me an email. And this is my personal cell. Um, if I don't pick up, please leave me a voicemail. I'm happy to get back to you. And I'm happy to answer any questions, whether it's through LinkedIn messaging or email or give me a call. And um, now I am I'm ready to uh, um, take some questions and I can go live for a few minutes. I think we've got how many, how much time we have about six, seven minutes oh, or are we at the end? I can hang out if you can, but it's up to you guys. Yeah. It's hey, uh, before we jump into the uh, Q and a, yeah. um, I want to say, you know, thank you for, for taking the time and, and educating us. 
Uh, I certainly have a lot of work to do on my LinkedIn, um, but you know, we're still kind of always growing. Um, yes. For the group, I just want to, you know, say, you know, thank you for, for um, sticking around and, and staying with us. Hopefully this was um, valuable for you. I just want to recap a little bit uh, from what I've, what I learned. Uh, basically LinkedIn is more of a long form marketing that sets your part, that sets you as a part as an expert. And then as you build out your profile, you know, make sure you're including very specific keywords in there, such as, uh, you know, uh, Cheshire real estate or, um, you know, uh, uh, New Haven realtor um, throughout your profile. And that, what that's going to do, hopefully it will optimize you and get you higher as um, people are searching out your services. And then also I, something that came to my mind when we we're going through the presentation is, you know, connecting your, your past database that you have to your LinkedIn profile. A lot of times I feel most of us are connected on Facebook or other social platforms, uh, but also we can also bring in that past database on this as, as well. Um, you know, just, just food for thought on that. Um, and then lastly, I'll, I'll, and I'll hop off right after this, but you know, thank you for Ryan Dumont of uh, Goosehead. You know, Ryan reached out to me about a year and a half ago. Uh, he's a co-sponsor uh, for this. So if you're, if you're looking for a, uh, just an amazing insurance agent, uh, please feel free to reach out to Ryan. I'm sure he'll reach out to you as well as, you know, if you're looking for a, another lender for your Rolodex, love to have the opportunity to uh, have that conversation. And of course, we'll reach out as well. Um, and, I'll, and lastly, I'll end with thank you for, um, you know, joining us today. Um, and hopefully, you're, you're, we're educating you and added value to the relationship. Um, and then, um, you know, please feel free to reach out. Let me know if you want to see something else. Be more than happy and uh, willing to uh, provide that as well. So, and of course, thank you, Kate. And then, yes, Rachel, I think you. you had something uh, before I hopped on. So, well, just, um, Rachel, just before you ask me that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And then if anybody wants me to go live into LinkedIn, I, I'm prepared to do that. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. And if anybody had any questions, uh, feel free to type them in. But we appreciate you connecting with us through our, uh, you know, educational series. So I'm willing to stay. I'm, I have. I can stay on, but I don't know if if anybody else can stay on. So whatever you guys want, I, I'll leave that up to you and Ray, uh, Matt and Rachel. Well, I don't see any other questions coming in, so. I think that you have really covered a lot of ground and given us some great information in which to update our profile and be more productive and connective on LinkedIn. Great. Well, you're very welcome. And um, I look forward to hopefully, hopefully uh, having you all connect. I wanted to add one thing to what Matt said. So he talked about the keywords again, which is very important. And I know I showed you where the keywords could go in like the headline up at the top, but the keywords can be incorporated into your copy, like in your about section. So if you say New, ha New Haven Realtor or, or whatever the term was that, that Matt you'd used, make sure you're incorporating those keywords within the content of like your about section or within the description and the experience section. So those keywords can be incorporated in the others within the body copy of some of those other sections too. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks everybody. Thanks bye -bye. for joining everybody.